What's up, everybody? Tim Anderson here, a.k.a. Renfell, and I am back with another of my Discovering Starfinder episodes, where we are continuing to work our way through the core rulebooks that I can better understand the Starfinder lore and systems that are behind this game, because I've never played it before, and I'm not familiar with it at all. If this is your first time tuning in, that's what this series is all about, me discovering starfinder that sounds fun to you buckle up because today we're getting into the next section which is equipment this is the next section of the book that i've gotten to that has a lot of there's a lot of stuff in here from what i was scanning through so we're going to be going through that today uh, if you've gotten this far and you haven't already done so, like, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. And if you are someone who is an expert at Starfinder, please let us know in the comments below more information about all these systems, ways that you DM campaigns, ways that you've played in campaigns, and tweaked these rules to fit your setting. I'm interested in all that stuff because ultimately at some point I will be DMing Starfinder and uh, I haven't made an announcement yet on the channel, but th there's something coming, my brother and I. and some of our friends so stay tuned for that in the meantime we're gonna get back going into this uh support if you can we've got super chats stickers all those things drop our membership here don't forget our uh patreon page with our own tabletop world fantasy book series and point and click adventure game discord links are down there let's go so equipment i mean i'm familiar with equipment i've played enough tabletops and crpgs over the years that i think i understand equipment well enough but i want to take a quick glimpse at this because i've never played in a sci-fi setting before, or at least I haven't played a sci-fi setting since, you know, back in my Star Wars RPG days in like 1997, 98, 99, somewhere in there. Uh, let's see, equipment, Starfinder, it's a dangerous galaxy, and a smart explorer knows the difference between success and failure, or even life and death, may be the equipment you have at the ready. Alright, so this chapter presents varieties of equipment, weapons and armor, to adventuring gear for scouting new worlds, yet not everything in this chapter is purely technological wonders. Many of the items here are the product of spellcasting artisans or are blending a magic and advanced sciences. That's something that's intriguing to me is the way they have like techno mages. Like it's like a it's not science fiction per se. It's like science fantasy, um, which is I've never played anything in the science fantasy realm before. So it's very intriguing to me um, as both a player and as a DM. Um, currency. Read through here real quick. Um, Standardized credits throughout the Pact Worlds and the Church on Abadar, it says. Converting world's economy to the credit standards is a requirement for joining the Pact Worlds. So that's like the European Union. And even worlds far outside the Pact's first jurisdiction often prefer to use them since they're so universally carried and understood. Credits are a combination of digital and physical currency. Really? Okay. Cred sticks. The widespread use of cred stick circumvents issues related to spending and storing currency. Flat and roughly the size of a human finger, ranging from cheap and disposable to elaborate works of arts, cred sticks are a convenient way to carry and spend money. So it's like a debit card. Yeah, it's like a pre it's like a um a prepaid credit card. Okay. The specifics of the procedures used to load up currency are dependent on the GM, but they might include retinal scans, fingerprinting, gene reading, or some form of magical identification. Oh, I like that. Ooh, this sounds interesting. Once loaded onto the cred stick, the funds become completely anonymous, and the owner can dole out any amount to other cred sticks wirelessly. Sometimes it's easiest for owners to simply hand over the cred stick itself and acquire a new one later. That's cool. So you could literally, for a payoff that you want to be anonymous... You'll load up 20,000 creds onto a cred stick. It's untraceable at that point, and you can then hand off that cred stick to anybody. That's cool. I like this for uh, bounty hunting and uh, things of that nature. Uh, says here, cred sticks provide users with peace of mind because they help keep identity theft rare and difficult. And if the pick and the pick who nabs your cred stick gains access only to whatever funds were left on it, not your entire net worth. Very very cool. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm looking beyond that. Carrying capacity, that's normal. Item bulk? Oh, that's interesting. Each item in this chapter has a reputation of its bulk, which is the number, the letter L if it has a light bulk, or a dash if it has not negligible bulk. If a gyro jet rifle has two bulk, a tactical knife has a light bulk, and a ring of sustenances has a negligible bulk. Every 10 items that have light bulk count as one bulk. 
and fractions don't count. Okay. I'm assuming that's a rule that you can choose to work with or throw out entirely. I don't typically worry too much about... Um, I've never worried about inventory management for my player characters unless we start getting into um, ridiculous territory. Like if they're carrying five long swords, that's not a weight issue. I'm more concerned about where are you carrying those five long swords? Because, you know, your inventory, you might be able to carry X amount of weight, but the, I like to go with the realism of um, you need a wagon, you need a pack mule. Like you can't be fighting and carrying five long swords in your backpack. Like that's just not realistic. That's the way I've always approached it, as opposed to weight. Bulk limits, there's encumbered, overburden, yeah, yeah, yeah. This stuff I'm not, I doubt, I, I don't think I would use it in my campaign. I've never used item weight in my campaigns before. Like I said, it's more about realism for me. Item level in Starfinder, bleh, in Starfinder, all armor, equipment, and weapons are assigned an item level. Okay, that's different than D&D. While characters can utilize items of any level, Game Masters should keep in mind that allowing characters access to items far above their current level may imbalance the game. Interesting. An object's item level represents the scarcity and value of the technology and or magic employed in its construction. It also determines its hardness and hit points. So items have hit points. Oh. Item level also helps convey the fact that buying equipment is more involved than just placing an order. Even finding the items you desire isn't always easy. Brothers have access to things such as powerful weapons and armor tend to deal only with people they trust. Okay. The game assumes that in typical settings you can find and purchase anything with an item level no greater than your character plus one, and in major settlements, items up to your character level plus two. The GM can restrict items to some can restrict access to some items uh, in exchange for quests and stuff. Okay, so that's item levels. That's an interesting... Um, okay. I'm not familiar with that way of doing things, so that's going to be something I have to get used to. Magic and technology. All weapons and armor are assumed to be technological in nature unless they have an analog special property. Which is, what does the analog special property mean? Other equipment is listed as being magical, technological, or hybrid of both, making it subject to effects that either target a kind of item. Armor upgrades and weapon fusions note whether they are magic, technological, or hybrid. If a magic fusion upgrade is added to a technological item, that item becomes a hybrid item. Alright, that's really, really interesting. Um, holding and wielding weapons, that's going to be standard stuff. Ammunition. This is interesting because it's going to be more than just like arrows and crossbow bolts so we've got cartridges charges missiles okay improvised weapons here we go targeting armor class whether you compare an attack roll to targets energy armor class eac or kinetic armor class kac depends on the type of damage weapon deals in rare cases, a weapon's damage type can be magical altered with weapon fusions, but it never changes whether the weapon targets EAC or KAC. If the weapon deals only energy damage, the attack targets EAC. Energy damage includes acid, cold, electricity, fire, and sonic. Also potentially magic and exotic. If a weapon deals only kinetic, it attacks, or if it deals both energy and kinetic, it attacks. KAC. Kinetic damage comes from attacks that deal bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing, as well as armor, as well as crushing, constriction, or impact from falling. So that's going to be armor class. It says here, see page 240. So that's interesting because there's not just one type of armor class, and that's going to be something I have to get used to as well because apparently here, rather than just having a generic armor class that covers everything, we have two different types of armor uh, types, which means you have to be aware of whether you're targeting... I guess it's essentially this is shields versus your physical. That's another way to look at it. Um, okay, weapon damage. You've got energy damage, kinetic damage, then weapon types, melee, advanced melee, small arms. Holy crap, these are a lot of... Um, these weapon tables. Oh my god. That's a lot of... <laughs> That's a lot of tables. Sorry, guys. I was going to show this. There, there's a lot of tables to go through here. 
Um, that's a little crazy. Oh, I gotta show this. This is this is this is this is really cool. Like that's just was pretty wicked. Be able to look at all the gun types. Um, so lots of tables here. Then we get down to weapon special properties, and here's the description for analog, which I remember being mentioned earlier. The weapon does not use any advanced electronics, computer systems, or electrical power sources. It is immune to abilities that target technology. While the use of the word analog is not technically correct when referring to technology, use of the term in this way has become common throughout the packed worlds. So it just means that it's a basic, like, rifle? Or pistol, maybe? Could be a sword. It's also this thing called archaic. It says the weapon deals five fewer damage unless its target is wearing no, no armor or archaic armor. Archaic armors are made of primitive materials such as wood or common steel. Oh, so that would be like swords. Automatic, blast, block, boost, bright, disarm, and tangle. These are all the different types. Weapon special properties. Oh my god, there's a whole bunch of then all these different critical hit effects. What? Arc, bleed, burn, corrosive. These are different types of effects that happen when you roll a critical hit. That's interesting. A critical hit means you roll your damage twice. That's common. Adding to each roll all your usual bonuses, including any additional damage for special abilities, and then add the rolls together to determine the damage dealt. Yes. But it says some weapons have an additional critical effect that applies when you score a critical hit. These effects are as follows. So this is cool. Uh, this is really neat because these are a lot of different um sub effects severe wound staggered stunned wound really cool stuff here weapon descriptions because we have cryo weapons flame weapons grenades oh my god see this is where we start to get into the stuff that's super complex and i'm only gonna learn through lots of gameplay sessions like it's one thing to read through it and go that's a lot of information it's another thing to dive into it and start going okay that's these are all the things that we can do projectile weapons shock weapons sonic weapons and categorized special materials weapon fusions which i understand weapon fusions i know how that that's just putting different things into your weapon these are the different types of things you can put into your weapon then we get into armor. Oh man, reading armor tables. There's the level, the price, the EAC bonus, the KAC bonus, the maximum dex bonus, the armor check penalty, the speed adjustment, the upgrade slots, and the bulk. Oh my god. Ooh, there's environmental protections too. Protects against environments that deal damage without allowing a fortitude saving through a breathing the atmosphere, such as lava. Oh, man. All sorts of armor descriptions are here. That's a nice graphic. Oh, there's a couple of graphic pages. That, Kas that Kasatha mi micro cord looks freaking amazing. Light armor, EAC plus one, KAC plus three, max dex bonus plus three. It looks sweet. Oh, there's powered armor as well. Requires its own battery. Comes with a fully charged battery at purchase. Powered armor augments the wearer's strength and his weapon mount. So that's all like Fallout. I've never played the tabletop, but I'm talking about the Fallout games with the power armor. Wicked. Oh my god, there's all these weapon upgrades as well. Force fields, too. And they have different colors. And they have fortification add-ons. Jetpack, jump jets. Jesus, there's a ton of information here. Cybernetics and augmentations. What the hell? Cardiac cylinder, cybernetic arm, dark vision capacitors, dermal plating. Ooh, dermal plating sounds cool. Well, I guess, yeah, if you're an Android, too. Then there's this information on computers. Oh, my God. There's a whole 
multiple pages about computers, root access, secure computers, modules, basic functions, countermeasures, computer tiers, countermeasure pricing, modules, upgrades, security modules, shot grids. Holy crap. And now we're getting into technological items. Holy, I can't get over this. This is a massive section of the book. Technological items are everywhere in Starfinder and include any number of devices useful to adventurers. There's a table here, but there's also stuff beyond this. Cable lines, comm units, locks, medical gear, portable lights, restraints, things like signal jammers, spy drones, regeneration tables, grapplers, med patch. What? And there's magic items on top of this? This is beginning into... Hang on, I'm reading here. Worn magic items are things like rings, cloaks, amulets, and gloves. Just like your armor has a limited number of upgrade slots, you can only wear up to two magical items at once and have both function normally. Beyond that, the, mag the magical fields start to interfere with each other. You can't wear more than one of the same type of item except for rings. If you put on an additional worn magic item beyond these first two, it does not function until you have no more than two total magic items worn. Oh my goodness. Then there's hybrid items. Starstone compass, null space chamber, mind link circlet, demononic editor. Null, okay, man. And now there's vehicles. Holy crap. Simple personal transports to massive airships and sea vessels. Starships are handled differently from vehicles. See Chapter 9 for more on starships. Holy crap. Pumps, jet, sub, hover pod, all-terrain transport. And then other purchases like personal items such as backpacks, clothing, hygiene kits, drugs, medicinals, and poisons, trade goods, services. All right, I finally got to the end of the sir. Oh, now here's the list for lodgings, professional services, recharging stations, and transportation. And then the crafting of equipment and magical items. Man, that right that is a huge chapter. That's a lot of data to absorb. I think this this has definitely been one of the longer episodes I've done in this in this series. Whew. That's there's a lot to take in because you're not just dealing with like in in fantasy like in Dungeons and Dragons or even like Pathfinder, you know, it's pretty standard as far as I'm aware. Like, from, I don't know about Pathfinder, but I know with like D and D over the years, whether you're talking first, second, or third, or fifth, it's pretty much just straight up. You have your normal armor and you have your magical armor. You have your normal weapons and your and your magical weapons. I think later on they added like the there's a tier of like um oh, what do they call it master work weapons or something like that, which is sort of an in between mundane and magical. But it was a fairly straightforward process. Um, and here it's a lot more complex because you have technological items, limitation of magical items. You've got you've got cybernetics. You've got power armor. I mean, you're blending technology with magic. So there's, you know, you're essentially just adding layers and layers and layers. I got a lot of reading to do. Whew. Anyway, folks. Uh, this is pretty cool. I'm assuming there's more if I go on like the archives website. I'm assuming there's going to be a lot more equipment available, lists from supplementary uh, books and adventure packs that have come out over the years. Um, in the meantime, if you got to the end of this and you like this and you want to stay involved with everything I'm doing in terms of discovering Starfinder and probably doing something later this year with playing some Starfinder, you know, never know. Uh, like, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. Support with a super chat or a sticker on these premieres. Super thanks after the video has been uploaded and it's live on the page. And then, of course, don't forget you can join as a member. Starts at $3 a month and goes up here on YouTube. We also have a Patreon page. There's a Discord. All the links to that stuff are down below. Thanks to tuning in, following along, and supporting this channel in all the ways that y'all do. I'll see you next time. Till then, stay safe and happy gaming. And enjoy chickens, because they're always in the background here on the homestead. <laughs>